What's up everybody? Welcome back to Old Volks TV. Taking a, a personal day today. <laughs> Got that yellow car. Uh, I sent that yellow car home. It's not done. It's running but it's having some fuel pressure issues and it needs more work and I need to take a break from that one. Uh, it's I got things backing up that I got to take care of. So we got some new things in the shop. You know, I can never have an empty shop for long. So we have this car that came in uh, just yesterday. This is uh, Bobby and Sheila's ragtop. Uh, you might recognize this car. This was on the cover of Volksmania. This car has been to SEMA. Uh, this car has been all over the place. It's an internet sensation. It's a really nice car. Uh, and they brought it because they're getting this two liter motor which I still have to finish putting together for them. Uh, the tins and everything, they, it's getting the Porsche shroud, that's all getting painted right now. Uh, so this will be something we got coming up. We got this thing, this is the 1904cc motor that uh, Chuck just built us, a Bowen built ejecto motor. Uh, this is a fresh build and we got all the stuff from all the friends on this one. You know, we called in every favor to get the good stuff. Uh, we got some CB ignition system, we got MST pulleys, we've got their crazy almost to be released automatic tensioner. No more set in tension, it's automatic, so we're going to check out that. Uh, I've got a JC alternator stand, uh, we've got some CSP valve covers, awesome powder coating, industrial tins, scat, brand new scat tins all over everywhere here. Got this ridiculous JKM linkage uh, vintage that I've had forever on a shelf and I've never used it, but we put it on there and I found out from the guy that there's only like 30 of those. He only made 30 of them in the entire world and he quit because he said it was too expensive and too hard to make. So I got that on there. Ah! And I figure if we're gonna go to all that trouble, why not vintage speed exhaust? So I went ahead and ordered one of these. This is also a brand new model that they've got. It's the like super SS ultra quiet stainless super low bus model. I don't know. It's crazy. It wasn't even on their website when I talked to them. Uh, I told them what I wanted and they said, oh, here, here's order this part number and we'll send you the right one. So it's really cool. I've unboxed it. I've looked at it. I love it. I'm going to put it on that motor today. We're going to see if we can get it, get it in there. So that's the big plan for today. Personal day, working on my own stuff. Very rare. Let's get this exhaust on. All right, so here's the box. Uh, it was it was sealed, obviously, when I got it, uh, but it was, you know, very well packed and actually had taken a piece of the, uh, the little foamy stuff in there uh, out and it was all formed, you know, to the stuff inside there, um, but I couldn't get it back in. So whatever, but you know, this is our, there we go. Boy, look at that stuff. There's so much stuff in there. It's crazy. Um, you know, we've got our, the, what is this? The little plugs for the, the side of the can there where if I was running the oxygen sensors, that's where those would go. Uh, these are your clamps and your gaskets. They give you some really nice hardware, uh, some flanged nuts which is really good because, you know, it just clamps on down a little harder. There's exhaust studs in here, it looks like. Um, it's like a whole, it's like a whole thing. It's like a whole thing, a whole kit. That's just one piece. Uh, we've got the adjustable flanges uh, because this is a stroker motor. It's a little bit wider. Uh, it's almost, I think, like an inch wider, or maybe a little more. Uh, so I've got these adjustable brackets if I wanted to run the heater boxes. Uh, this will allow you to still run them and everything will line up perfectly uh, so you won't have any trouble. And more gaskets and more nuts in case we didn't have enough. Uh, we've got the little heater box flanges and I don't know if you can see that but they're numbered uh, for which cylinder you're going to run them on, number one or number three, so you don't get them backwards. Uh, we've got the heat stuff for the, uh, the little downpipes like a little sleeve that you put on there with the clamps uh, just to keep the engine heat, I guess, down off your tins. I don't know, it was something, something else to throw in the box, you know? Uh, the J-tubes, you know, nice stainless steel J-tubes. They feel pretty heavy, nice thick flanges. Uh, they look like they've been ground flat. Uh, you know, they're pretty nice, they're bent. 
know if you can see the shape of that. They got this nice compound shape. Um, those are not labeled, surprisingly, but I guess they're only going to go on one way, so, you know, that's fine. Uh, these are the number two and number four. Yeah, number two and number four coming off, going down into the can, uh, like little mini tiny J-tubes for the, the back part of the motor. Uh, this is some of that formed foam stuff shipping stuff and then bam look at that that's beautiful stainless you know the only thing with stainless stuff is you know you see all the welds and then as you use it it, it, it kind of turns blue and purple uh, some people like that I'm not really a huge fan but this whole thing fits behind the bumper uh, so you're not gonna see it you know this this curved pipe right here uh, it tucks in behind the bumper. Mark was having some issues with his. He said that it was hitting the bumper because we have the uh, Jeremy's hitches on there and, and it won't work with this, but I'm working on that. <laughs> I've been talking to Jeremy about extending the pieces and pushing the bumper out a little bit. Uh, so we'll have that and we can put the hitch back on, but for now we're just gonna run it with no bumper uh, just to see in case I gotta pull this motor out again. I've had so bad luck with motors lately. Uh, but there we go. I mean, that thing is heavy and heavy duty. And then, you know, here's those those top ones kind of go on like this. And then the J-tubes mount down here on the, uh, on the back ones. And everything's threaded too, which is super nice. Uh, like all these are threaded, so you don't have to try to get back there and get a wrench back there and, and put it on. You know, like some of the other flange ones, these flanges are actually tapped. Uh, so when you go to put the J-tubes on and you, and you go to mount them up, it's gonna be, or whatever, however that thing goes. Uh, I guess these go on there, maybe. I gotta read the instructions. <laughs> uh, but they're, 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 they're tapped. So you don't have to try to wiggle a wrench back there and get a nut on and fight it. Uh, these are all pre-assembled at the factory too. So they know that everything goes together and then they box it up super nice and ship it from Taiwan. And actually it came so freaking fast. I ordered it and I had it here within like four days it got here. Uh, so a little bit pricey, but you know, worth it if you want it to be quiet. I got that Sidewinder on there now. It is so loud, you know, cool for a bug if you're just gonna be jamming around town, but on a long trip, that thing is, it's loud and more, you know, it's just, ugh, anything over like a 20 minute drive, it's too much. Um, I love it, but just, it's not a good fit for something that you want to take a 2,000 mile trip in. No good. All right, enough talk. Let's get this box and trash out of the way and let's get this thing on the motor. All right. So, for this install, I'm going to be using, uh, these are CSP, these are the number 10, um, I can get the box open or the bag here. These are the ones that take a, a number 10 socket, but they fit on the regular, you know, they got the little flange on them. I just like these. They're a little smaller than the ones provided, uh, and in my experience with a header, it may not be true with this one because I've never done one of these, but you don't have a lot of room to get the, the tools in there. So uh, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna hang, I'm gonna try to do this as, uh, you know, like, like the ones I've done in the past. We're gonna hang the J-tubes and stuff kind of loose and get everything fitted. And then we'll, then we'll install. No, we're gonna do this real quick like oh, I should probably get the gaskets right important to uh, have the gaskets in there when you put the exhaust on <laughs> believe me I've made that mistake before This is a little fiddly and a little weird. 
Uh, it took me a minute to figure out what all this stuff is for. Uh, so these are for if you're gonna run heater boxes, but I'm not, uh, at least not right now. I have some, but I don't even know if they're good. And I didn't buy the $700 vintage speed heater boxes. Doesn't get that cold here that much. I got that diesel heater in there anyways. I think we're good. So I'm gonna just run the J-tubes. And if you run the J-tubes, that's what this little guy is for. I don't know if you can even, is that in focus? Hey, look at there. So this is like an adjustable, this is what's adjustable for the width. Um, and then those little studs that are in the kit, uh, they go right in there like that. And they're nice because they have a little stopper so you don't go too far. Uh, as far as I can tell, these are the same uh, for both sides. So you put your little gasket on there, put your little that guy on there. The instructions that, that they showed, uh, the little paper, <laughs> it wasn't really much for instructions. Uh, it just said to use these flange bolts or flange nuts. So I'm gonna put them on, uh, but I'm not gonna put them on super tight because I wanna be able to adjust that. Uh, this is where the fitment comes in when the J-tube goes onto that uh, because the engine is a little bit wider. These are probably gonna end up over there. Uh, and then we can just tighten them up after. Just make sure you don't pinch the gasket and then make sure that can move. Not loose, but just enough to move it and then it'll stay put like safaris. See, you can like put it and it'll stay put. Oop. And then you can tighten it after. It won't move on you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that side done. Uh, we also have this little fiberglass super itchy sock uh, and that is for the number two and the number four uh, these little down pipes that mount over here uh, it's, it's just like a fire jacket I guess it's just really for looks but we're gonna put it on because they sent it to us so uh, seems pretty straightforward how they go on they got little hose clamps I'm sure it'll slip over the smaller end of this thing and uh, so we're gonna put that on too real quick like uh, I'm just going to basically speed this up, get everything loosely attached, and then we'll zoom in and I'll, I'll explain it as we get everything tight. So let's, uh, let's get to work. See how pretty that is it's kind of tedious you got to clean it up especially around those bolt holes uh, you don't want to have anything getting in the way of the nut I might have to do a little more trimming now I remember doing headers with this stuff you know when I was way younger many many years ago and uh, we would always soak it in water and I didn't think of that until after I was almost done because this is fiberglass and i already am feeling the itch you know it gets on you it gets on your clothes and you're just it's awful so i see a cold shower in my future <laughs> uh, but there you go so you kind of spread it out slip it over i left a little room i didn't want it to be like super tight they give you i mean it's like exactly enough i don't know how they know that that's crazy um yeah but it's tidy clean it up with some scissors and then the you know the the website or whatever says that you mount these first and then you mount the whole thing uh, that's what these little bolts are for 
uh, is to mount it there. And I guess you do still need to get a nut. I was wrong. Just the back ones are tapped. Uh, so that's interesting. But I don't think I'm going to put these on first. I think I'm going to put these on the motor loose like I did the J-tubes and then kind of line everything up and then get it all cinched down. I just feel like that's going to be less of a hassle. Um, so they, they did give us enough gaskets and stuff. I don't know what this is for. There's like one extra. Maybe they just give you an extra, but uh, that's how we're going to do that. So I'm going to put these on the motor. The J-tubes are already on the motor nice and loose. These little guys are loose, so hopefully everything is, is adjustable enough that we can get it. So let's, uh, oop. okay, there we go. So let's fast time. We'll get this thing put on real quick, like, and then we'll look at it and marvel in our amazing skill. Come on, let's go. I got no words. I'm speechless. <laughs> it looks so good. It looks so good. Uh, man, a little fiddly to put on this vintage speed exhaust, but the way that they make it adjustable means it's going to fit and it actually fit. It was a lot easier to put together than that Sidewinder. You know, that Sidewinder is really cool and it, it looks great and it sounds amazing. Uh, the one that we did on the yellow car, but just all the different twists and bends and things that was kind of really hard to put together this one you know if you leave everything loose and, and put it together and and just sort of go around and tighten everything a little bit at a time it, it goes together pretty good this section right here there's eight seven seven things you have to tighten down just in this area right here ten because you got you got two here you got two here you got the adjustable clamp, you got the J tube, and then you got this O2 sensor bung. I mean, you see this picture right here. This is, you gotta make sure you get all of this stuff tight. Or else you're gonna have some leaks and some problems. Uh, then you got the back, you know, J tubes to put on there. It's heavy, it's heavier than I thought it was gonna be, and it's bigger than I was thinking it was gonna be. But it fits on there really nice. Like it's clean, it's good. Kind of complements all the other performance stuff that we have on there. I still have to clean this linkage, but. Uh, you know, that's rad. It just looks great. I love it. Uh, I can't wait to get it in. I got to put some oil in there and I got to extend the wires for the uh, coil because I stuck it on the back here. It was too cluttered here, so I moved it to the back. So I just have to make these a little longer. Um, I got to put some breathers on the valve covers. And that's it. So we'll give you guys a, a tour of this motor when we start it up. You know, we'll show you all the close ups of everything. And then, uh, you know, we'll fire it up probably next week and, and get it tuned and get it ready and then get it in the bus. I can't wait. God, I'm so excited. I've had so many bad motors between this year and last year. Things that didn't work out and, and just, ah. But Chuck came through, man. We got it. Bowen built. Ejecto motor. <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, so that's going to do it for this week. Uh, hit us in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. Buy the t-shirts. Visit the friends, hit all the links, Amazon store, all that good stuff. It's down below. Check it all out. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next week.